marijuana, <laughs> cannabis, weed, dope, hash, herb, chronic, ganja, all of it. It's a great Google search. I enjoy doing that, but no matter what we call it, it's on its way. It's coming. Uh, admittedly, in North Carolina, we're probably a little behind some other parts of the country, but the cultural momentum, the political momentum, momentum it's happening. And it's imperative, I believe, for us to understand the basics in order to help our patients navigate the potential risks and benefits of its use, but more importantly, to help our lawmakers and legislators navigate policy making. So to take leadership on a topic, it's imperative to understand the topic. And to understand the topic, it's a prerequisite to know its story. So what is marijuana's story and its medicinal use? Uh, it's an old one, like ancient times old. It goes back 5,000 years, evidence of use in present day Romania. And then evidence of medicinal use, sort of the waning years of the Roman Empire, 400 AD. I, I always, when I was reading up on this, I got a kick of the thought of sort of this gladiator time, people getting high as a, as a, as a way to treat ailments. Uh, our, our history here in the States, of course, by definition, is, is not nearly as, as long. but Going back to the end of the 19th century, early 20th century was in use. Uh, pharmacopoeia, in fact, described it in 1850. So it was, it was mainstream. It wasn't an outlier then. The trajectory of the drug in our country really changes in 1937 with the Marijuana Tax Act. Um, this did not criminalize the drug, but it was the first regulation, the first restriction placed on it. And not surprisingly, once the government started regulating something, its tendency was to regulate more, not less. Uh, that comes in 1950 with increased legal penalties. There's, a, there's an act called the Boggs Nar Narcotic Control Act. And then quickly thereafter, the Controlled Substance Act of 1970, complete prohibition of marijuana. I want to take a, just a moment here to talk about this and, and, and the results of it. The obvious is it was illegal, right? So it, it marginalized the use, greatly reduced its use, uh, limited its availability. The not as obvious is it limited federal funding for the potential research with marijuana. And that act very much contributes to where we are today, which is, which is this general lack of, lack of evidence, lack of data that, as we try to navigate the subject. So, Complete prohibition is where we stayed until 1996. Our friends out west in California, the first state to legalize medical marijuana. That, of course, uh, was just the first domino to fall. We're here 22 years later, up to almost 30 states with some form of legalized mar medical marijuana, several of them with legalized recreational marijuana. And then just on Wednesday, Canada went live with nation nationwide legalized recreational marijuana. So that brings us today, like literally in this room today, a group of health, healthcare professionals, a group of health providers with varying degrees of interest in the topic, it, topic, varying degrees of knowledge about the topic, varying degrees of experience with marijuana, but all of us with patients with increasing interest in the topic, increasing knowledge about the topic, and increasing experience with, with marijuana. That, you add in this seemingly overnight explosion of CBD products that are everywhere now, and, and apparently CBD is much like duct tape. It can fix anything, and patients believe that. And so, so what, do, what do we do, and, and where do you start? I think a fundamental that must be understood is the, the methods of consumption. So three main ones, uh, inhalation via, via smoking, that's kind of traditional, marijuana cigarettes, joints, uh, bong use, uh, in inhalation via vaporization, so that's vaping, all, you know, all the kind of e-cigarette type um, going on. And then the third one, which is coming more, more, more popular, is edibles, mostly in the form of some kind of gummy or candy or lozenge, but it's, there's cookies and, and brownies, there's even drinks, sort of energy style drinks that are going on. And not surprising, much like it matters how you take a drug, IV versus PO, it matters how you consume marijuana. So inhalation, whether it be vaporization or smoking, uh, pretty quick onset, a couple of minutes, peaking 15 to 30 minutes, kind of clearing at two to three hours. Edibles, a little more variable. Um, 
you know, it, it, 30 to 90 minutes onset could last a f uh, peaking in a few hours, two to three hours, and can last up to 12. So it matters how you take that. And so think about if we had a, a diabetic treatment or antipsychotic or a hypertensive treatment that we were recommending the patients without any further instruction. You have a patient come in with an elevated hemoglobin A1C and you, you, know, you know what I think you should try? Insulin. And that's it. <laughs> Out the door. Not where to get it, not how to take it, not the dosing, not what it might do to you, not the potential side effects. And that, that's what's going on. And all these kind of off-the-record recommendations of trying mar marijuana or even CBD for very, very ailments, it's, it's, um, there's no further instruction. So what's a, what's a patient to do? Um, so, so that kind of brings us into this, where the debate is. And, and as I was working through this project, I really started to feel like the movement has outpaced the debate. Like, it's happening, right? Our debate on trying to figure out whether it's good or bad or what's its role is a little bit behind. But I was interested in trying to kind of convince myself of both sides of the debate, so kind of really understand the issue. And it was hard to do on either side, and that's back to 1970 with the uh, Controlled Substance Act. Uh, there's just not a lot of data. There's not a lot of studies. Uh, the ones that are there are pretty soft. A lot of uh, of the information we have is gleaned from studies that were on recreational use, so it doesn't necessarily apply. Couple that with the fact that it is a botanical, so it's not subject to FDA approval. So the basics that we need to know about a treatment or, or pharmacologic agent, dosing, efficacy, indications, adverse effects, drug interactions, complications, we don't know. So, and that's the kind of scientific medical side. We add on top of that the sort of legal um, regulatory side. So like who prescribes it? And that in itself is a misnomer. It's not prescribed, it's not a drug. Even in states where it's legalized, it's recommended. But who recommends it? Does it take a physician? Does it take a healthcare provider at all? Who dispenses it? Pharmacies, uh, dedicated to dispensaries, ABC style type stores, and then the ever important one, you remember Jerry Maguire, show me the money, who makes money on it? And that's important, and, and as I worked through this and over the last couple of months, I found this topic coming up at a lot of uh, different type of events that I was at, mostly because I brought it up, but I was, uh, <laughs> but I was trying to get a feel for what people thought, and I was at, uh, um, particular event that was, um, it was actually in Hillsboro, so it was, it was closer to this part of the state, and it was not a medical event. It was definitely more of sort of a politico type that was there, and there was a gentleman that I met, and in in his, he thought it should be legalized um, just out, all out recreationally, and he made a point to me that really stuck with me in that the argument in North Carolina that's going to legalize any form of marijuana is not a medical one. It's an agricultural and economic one. So the idea of converting all those tobacco fields to marijuana fields, to keep those farmers afloat, generate their income, more importantly generate income for the state, is where this will probably flip the legislator at some point. So as I took in this kind of soup of information and, and initially was a little bit uh, dissatisfied about where the leadership opportunity was. Like, like I wanted to kind of convince myself of something and, and sort of take off with it. Um, but it did kind of bubble up to the surface in another way. So my feeling really is that as a, it's probably going to happen with just for other reasons other than medical reasons, but the advocacy piece from a physician point of view, rather than advocating legalization or continued criminalization or medicinal use or not allowing that, is advocating for the resources, meaning money, and funding for the proper research so we can have intelligent conversations with ourselves and with our patients and know, knowing whether it will help them or not. So with that, I thank everybody for being here. I thank Jerry and Larry and Tina for their time and expertise all year, and my colleagues in the Leadership College. It's been a wonderful experience. Thank you.